guys, we have been learning all about nonfiction text features in guided reading. If you remember the genre nonfiction, and if you think of the song, you would be singing, nonfiction means it's true, nonfiction means it's true. Hi ho, so now I know nonfiction means it's true. So we know the non the genre nonfiction means it's about true facts. These books are true, all right, real information. Now under nonfiction, we have, if you look in your reader's notebook, we have been studying different genres. So under nonfiction, we have been studying informational, which are, in the fancy word is expository text. It tells us information about something. For instance, here's an informational book. It says, what is a coral reef? Now, when you guys picked up books from my library, I made sure that you had some informational books. So you could probably look at them and I mark them with an I, means informational. You might even have an informational book, right? It tells us real information about the coral reef. The other genres we've been studying in nonfiction is autobiography. That means a person writes a story about their own life. So here's a football player, Troy Aikman. This is an autobiography. He wrote a story about his own life entitled that things change, okay? It's an autobiography because he wrote it about his own life. Here's another one I read, Bill Peet. He wrote an autobiography about his own life. All right, look at it. I actually read this, it, this book and it's an Caldecott honor book. All right, so he wrote it himself about his own life. He's a famous author and illustrator. And then we have biographies. That is a story that someone writes about somebody else's life. Now, autobiographies and biographies, if you remember, they're usually about somebody important. So here's a great series, all right? If you like to read about um, people, this 10-day series is a great series. This book is on Martin Luther King Jr. And David Colbert is the author of this book. So he wrote this story about Martin Luther King Jr.'s life. So that's called a biography. Here is another great series, if you like to read about people's life, is Who Were or What Was. That series is great. Who Were the Brothers Grimm, all right? Brothers Grimm wrote the famous fairy tales. They actually wrote down the famous fairy tales that we know and love today. And this is by Avery Reed. So she wrote about their life, which makes it a biography, okay? And then the other more popular genre that's become more popular over the last few years is a narrative nonfiction. And you guys have already read a narrative nonfiction story. We did it in guided reading. It's called Room to Grow. So narrative means it's a story. Nonfiction means it's true. And look, here's this text feature of a map. All right. So a narrative nonfiction is a true story about someone's life. Okay. Happen. And we know this is about a garden that they made for their community because we had already read it. So that is the other genre of narrative nonfiction. Now, we've learned a lot of different text features. So we know nonfiction, any of these books that I just showed you, all of them, can have any or all of these text features that we've been studying. And I have a big poster up here. You also have your own poster in your book, in your reader's notebook, that looks like, let me find, oh, let me get my reader's notebook out. That would help. But your poster in your reader's notebook of the different text features looks like this. Should already be glued in there. This can help you remember what the text features are. Now, I also have on my poster, we know the table of contents. That's at the beginning of the book. It gives us the topics and headings and what page numbers to find them on. Headings are the bold words that tell what that paragraph is going to be about. We have photographs. Those are like the pictures that you take with a camera, all right? Show how they look in real life. And you also know, we don't know, we always have photographs, but we also have illustrations. Sometimes you can have a painting in there too. Labels, that means that's one word to describe a picture or a diagram. So if you look on your, your, in your reader's notebook, the picture of your frog, that's a diagram. These are labels. It's one word, like the back, 
eyes, front legs. Those are one word. Then we have captions. We know captions and pictures are married. If you have a picture, you have a caption that tells what that picture is about. All right, diagrams. I just showed you that diagram of the frog. A diagram is a labeled picture that shows the parts of something. Maps, I think we all know what a map is, okay? Like in our narrative nonfiction book, that map of Oregon. Timelines, that shows things in a chronologic logical order. So chronological is just a fancy word for sequence, sequential order, and means things that happen like first, then next. It has to be time order. Index is at the end of a book, all right, an end of a nonfiction book. It tells what page to find specific info or key vocab, and it's in ABC order. We all know the glossary that lists important words that were in the book, and they're also in ABC order. Bold, italic, highlighted, and underlined words. Authors use those to make you pay attention to important words. They are put in print like this because they are important. And then they're usually in the glossary too. You also have graphs, charts, and tables that show information. And a sidebar. That tells extra information related to the topic and it usually comes in from the side. All right. So these are all those different text features we have been looking at and now we are going to practice and it's really important that we read all the text features in a nonfiction book okay that's important too you don't skip over them because they tell all the information of the topic that the author wants you to learn about now you guys got this big folder that I put all your supplies in when I gave you all the supply all your new supplies at Tame and Asacta. So you wouldn't get your folder that looks like this because we're recycling it, reusing it. Now, if for some reason you threw this folder away, you don't have it, okay, that's fine. Get a big piece of paper or put this on a couple different pieces of paper. Just be creative. If you have this folder, I want you to use it. We're gonna recycle it. At this point, all the papers inside of it should be in your blue tri folder that I gave you that has math, ELA, social sciences, or your family might have organized all your new papers in a different way, but they should be organized somewhere else because this isn't really a great spot because they can all fall out. This was just more to give it to you, okay? When you have your, your big envelope like this, your big folder like this, if you need to pause and go find it, you can. You're gonna open it up like this, nice and wide, and then you're going to fold it like a hot dog. So you're gonna fold the ends into the middle and fold this end into the middle just like so. If you need to pause and take your time, make sure that you crease it, put it down on the table, and I like to really crease it so it's a nice, even, straight edge, because this is gonna be a project, and we need to take our time and make it look nice and neat, and put your best effort in it, okay? So I don't wanna see things like just crumpled up or not a nice, neat, neat edge. That wouldn't be good third grade work and I'm gonna make sure the edges are nice and creased. So it should look like this when you're done. Now, let me show you your final product, what it's gonna look like. Here's a nonfiction text feature about me lap book. That is what we are going to be working on. You're gonna create your own nonfiction text feature about yourself. So it's sort of like an autobiography because you were telling this about, you're telling me about yourself. So what I want you to do next is to find your papers that look like this. Non-fiction text features about me. There's a packet of papers, looks just like this. We are gonna be working on this front page right now. All right, so if you need to pause the video and go find it, please do. I want you to just take off the front page like this and get your scissors, just like Mrs. Smith did. And I'm going to take my time and I am going to cut each of these out. Now that you guys have finished cutting out that page, I would like you to start coloring. Now, Mrs. Smith has colored hers and I want you to see my nonfiction text feature about me 
title page. This is sort of like the title page. I colored it. Take your time. All right, make it look nice. This is a project. After you do that, your text feature checklist. You're not going to do anything with it, but if you notice, Mrs. Smith sort of colored it, made it a little fancy because I wanted to do my best on this project, but you're not checking anything yet because we're not there. All right, so you just color it. And then I have my title of my book, of my lap book. It's called Magnificent Mrs. Smith. All right, I used alliteration there. M and M, Magnificent Mrs. Smith. All right, so I would like you to think of a title that goes with your name. Maybe use alliteration. All right, that means it starts with the same sound as your name, all right? And then a photograph. Now, I didn't have a photograph here at school when I was doing this. And as you can tell, Mrs. Smith is not an art teacher. This is why I did not become an art teacher. I'm not great at drawing, but I drew myself the best I could, okay? So if you don't have a picture of yourself or you can't get a picture of yourself, that's okay. Draw a picture of yourself, all right? If you do have a picture and you want to cut it out and put it here, you may do that. Once you have colored all your, all your pieces, just like Mrs. Smith, we are going to be gluing them on the front of our folder. So you're going to need your glue and you are going to put glue on the back of each of yours, just like Mrs. Smith. And the nonfiction text feature one is going to go on the top left-hand corner, just like Mrs. Smith gonna look just like that then I am going to glue my title right underneath so I glue the back and I'm gonna glue it right under where it says all about me so my title sort of like my title page so it looks just like this and then I'm going to put my checklist on the upper right hand corner. Should look just like this. And last but not least, I'm going to put my photograph right underneath my checklist. it should look just like this when you're done. You're going to take a photograph and submit the first part of your project to me.